The JavaScript runtime wars keep getting more interesting. From Node, to Dino, to Bun, to Hermes, to Static Hermes, there's more happening almost every day. And as of today, another company has entered the arena, and it is not a competitor I would have expected. AWS has announced their new JavaScript runtime, which, not a thing I expected to say, especially since they've been so involved with Static Hermes, but there are good reasons for it. It is 10 times faster in specific scenarios. How? Well, let's take a look. LLRT is the low latency runtime, which is an experimental JavaScript runtime built to address the growing demand for fast and efficient serverless applications. This is where things get really interesting. This is a runtime built specifically to make serverless as good of an experience as possible. And when you're running the serverless, you'll see the difference because it can be up to 10 times faster for startup and two times faster overall compared to other JavaScript runtimes, specifically Node. But what is a cold start and what is serverless? Well, I think to appreciate this, you need to understand what a cold start is. It's one of the biggest reasons serverless isn't ideal for a lot of scenarios. When you make a request on a serverless service, a server is running. It's just not a server you've provisioned. When a request is made, Amazon finds a box somewhere in their service that is close to where your necessary data is, like your JavaScript that has to run. It spins up that box, it loads Node, it loads all of your JavaScript, it spins up your JavaScript, and then it can process the request and send a response. This can take a long time, depending on how much JavaScript you're actually sending. And Node itself is pretty big, coming in at over 28 megabytes. That much data being a necessary blocker for every request that is made sucks. Thankfully, it's not every request because once that's started, the server will sit there for a little bit waiting to see if more requests come in. That's what's called a warm start because the box is already warmed up. But cold starts are going to be the worst times you see. And even on services like Ping, which is the video call app I built, we see cold starts from two to three seconds long. That's just the amount of time it takes before you can start doing any work. And you can see those same numbers here when you look at the speeds they were seeing on node 20 on Lambda. We see 1,457 milliseconds for the P0. So that's the best case. The worst case is 1,678 milliseconds. That's 1 1.7 seconds before you could start responding. And that sucks. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend it doesn't, but there's been a lot of work being put in to prevent this from being as hard of a block as it historically has been. Instead of 1.5 seconds of blocking time with the cold starts that we were seeing with Node, it's a lot closer to 0.05 seconds. Yes, that is a much more than 10X difference. 50 milliseconds versus 1500 milliseconds for the P0 is absurd. And even in the worst case cold start here, we're still not even seeing 100 milliseconds. That's nuts. So how are they doing it? Well, there's an important piece that is detailed here. Obviously there's Rust, which is cool. Nice to see more people building JavaScript-y tools in Rust. It's become kind of a common thing now, but the JavaScript engine they're using internally is QuickJS. Both Node and Dino rely on V8, which is the same JavaScript engine that you run in Chrome. Whereas Bun relies on JSC, the JavaScript core, which is part of Safari and the Apple ecosystem. LLRT being built on QuickJS is very interesting because I haven't seen many building around it for a long time. QuickJS is a C++-based JavaScript runtime. Here are some benchmarks that they posted a few years ago highlighting just how fast it can be, but also highlighting how V8 is much faster once you have longer things running. I actually got comment from Jared, the creator of Bun on this. His take is that this is a low-tech worker D. Worker D is the Cloudflare Edge runtime. So he thinks this is meant to compete with that to give you less of a reason to use Edge. Honestly, I think this is a great take because the only reason I've personally bothered with Cloudflare and edge stuff has had nothing to do with edge location. It's been a combination of cost and how much better the cold starts are when you have these more minimal engines. Jared also specifically calls out that this wouldn't be competitive with Bun or Node for anything that takes longer than five milliseconds of CPU time. I want to be clear that this is the case for things that don't have cold starts because that 10x plus difference is a big deal if that's blocking your application. But if you have a server that's running for a long time, the benefits here aren't as big. And you'll see that in the numbers here, which is their benchmark that they published, where you see V8 just slaughtering. 2xing the score of QuickJS. It's still way better than duct tape, excess, mu, and all these other alternatives that existed at the time, but even Hermes is quite a bit faster. The big win though is in this top row. Specifically, the executable size for QuickJS is less than a megabyte. One more interesting piece, the AWS SDK is actually baked into the low latency runtime. This is interesting because the AWS SDK is one of the most heavy parts of our lambdas when we run things for upload thing, which if you haven't checked it out, best way to do file uploads for Next.js applications. We had to include the AWS SDK on our side and it is heavy it immediately introduces like a half second latency penalty just to load it. So having this baked into the runtime makes it way, way faster to start up and have access. It 
really is showing why this is being made because it helps with the AWS and specifically AWS services plus Lambda use case versus V8, which is 28 megs. That is pretty significant difference and by itself significantly lowers your costs and the speed at which you can spin up an instance that's running JavaScript. And if you're just passing fetch calls back and forth and returning a response from a database or running some really quick things, QuickJS is actually a really sensical solution. And when you think about all the different things people reach for workers for right now, I can see why this is an interesting project. That said, I really don't want to oversell it because it's an experimental package and it's very experimental. This is an early attempt at Amazon building something to make cold starts with JavaScript better on Lambda. And they're probably the best company to be doing this. It's also important to know that most of this project is one person. When I checked out the contributors, it's almost entirely Richard Davidson working on this project. He's been working on it for a few months now, but this is still an early experiment Amazon is doing on the side on their AWS Labs GitHub account to see how important and how valuable a faster runtime can be. So yeah, I'm excited. What about you? Do you see yourself playing with this new runtime or is this just some initial JavaScript cruft you don't care about? Let me know in the comments. See you guys next time. Peace nerds.